This time on Rad Rat Video, we're talking about indoor skate parks and a few of your other questions. Let's do it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding or at least discuss them here. And on uh, this series, Ask Rad Rat, I answer the questions that you submit through my website, radratvideo.com. And the first one that I've got for you today is from Nathan. Who says, it seems like nowadays it's common for little kids to be playing at skate parks, sometimes without doing anything to ride, sometimes without anything to ride even. And I rarely see people try to stop them or call them or their parents out for letting them get in the way. I've heard some of the guys who were around in the earlier days of skateboarding say that if people did that, they'd get yelled at or asked to leave. Should skaters be harder on parents who let their kids run around the skate park? And if not, how can we stop them from doing it? That is a tough question because I mean, we all run into that, I think. There's two different kinds of kids that are at the skate park that you don't want. One is the kid who, like you said, doesn't have anything to ride. They're just running up and down on the ramps or they're just like playing in the middle of the, of the skating area, you know, like the pathway. The other kind is the kids who are on their scooters or maybe skateboards, probably scooters though, and they just get in the way and they don't know like the etiquette of being at a skate park and they just kind of do laps and don't pay attention and get in your way. Both are bad, you don't want either. But just because skaters used to do something back in the day, it's not a good, a good reason to do it. If you watch my Lance Mountain Retro Rippers video, he's got some stories about like hazing new kids and at the skate park where he worked and like, you know, putting them in garbage cans and dropping them into the deep end of the pool and shot a kid in the face with a BB gun. Like, yeah, you could do a lot of that stuff. But, but don't. I would suggest not yelling ever, but you could talk to the parents and let them know like, hey, this is dangerous. We're flying through here. Sometimes I land something backwards and I can't really control. You need to be able to be aware and know what's going on and just explain it. Um, I think that's the best way to go. I don't think most parents want their kids to be in danger, but if you go and yell at them, then they might want to stay there just out of spite because People are the worst, right? So being respectful and just having a discussion is probably the best best way to go. Um, and if that doesn't work, then that's when you talk to the kid. Because the kid was probably dropped off there. They don't know what they're doing. You don't yell at the kid. You want that kid to eventually skate and be really good and entertain you when you're old. So you don't want to scare them away from skateboarding. You don't want to be a jerk. You don't want to, you don't want that. But if the parents aren't gonna handle it, then you tell the kid, watch out, you know, and you kind of, you might scare them a little bit. And I didn't yell at them, but, you know, make sure they know that it's not safe and hopefully they decide to make smarter decisions than their parents do. And if none of that works, I don't know, key their car or something. Okay, next question is from Jurgen, who says, uh, hey, Rad Rat, hope I'm not annoying you with my questions. I guess some of them are stupid. I've recently been been rewatching the old Simpsons episodes and it got me wondering on whether Bart Simpson being a skateboarder might have been an influence for a lot of people starting skating. You talked about the Tony Hawk games having influenced a lot of people, including you. I wonder if the Simpsons had a similar effect in the early 90s, considering how huge and counterculture they were. Are there any pro skaters who have spoken about Bart Simpson being the reason they started skating? Greetings from Germany. Um, I can't say I can think of anyone in particular who has credited Bart Simpson with being like their first introduction to skateboarding, but it would not surprise me at all. So once they put all of the old episodes on uh, Disney Plus, I started to, to watch them too, because I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons growing up. My dad thought that I would turn out to be sarcastic and be like the worst kid ever if I had Bart Simpson as an example. So I was not allowed to watch it. So uh, the only the only Simpsons stuff I'm familiar with is much more recent, like 2005, I think I started being able to watch it uh, because I was a teenager and I could get away with it. But um, yeah, if you watch some of that old stuff, there is a lot of actual skateboarding in them. You know, it's not legit as far as the tricks and all that stuff, but it's a plot point more often than it was in the stuff that I was more, more familiar with. Like he had a skateboard in the later seasons, but you know, aside from the episode with Tony Hawk in it, uh, it's not really a thing. It's just kind of, he happens to have one. But there's an episode to the first or the second season where Bart wants to 
uh, impress the kids at school. So he's gonna ollie over the uh, Springfield uh, uh, Canyon. And so like there's a perfect uh, like stone, natural stone uh, rolling that he can drop in on. And Homer tries to stop him, but you know, he grabs his skateboard and he ends up on top of it and he's rolling down and he almost clears it and then he falls down to the bottom and then helicopter picks him up and then he slams against the wall the whole time and then gets in the ambulance. And as the ambulance pulls away, he falls out and falls down again. It, it was good. I, I, I laughed during that. But yeah, like, there's a lot of actual skateboarding stuff that happens and uh, I could see that being an inspiration for a lot of people. If not starting people skating, um, at least as far as art, you know, like I've seen Bart Simpson's drawn on grip tape and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I don't know how much of an effect he had because it's just the idea of skateboarding and you know, you're not gonna learn what any tricks are or anything like that. So it might be a first entryway into skateboarding. Um, I have no doubt it was, but yeah, I don't know of anyone in particular who has credited him. The next one is from Garrett. When building a rail to skate, how big do the feet of it have to be? Like, is there a formula for how wide they have to be based on how tall the rail is? Because you don't want them wider than they have to be. Don't want them getting in the way when riding up to the rail. Um, this is something I don't know for sure. If you have rail building experience, um, put it in the in the comments. Because like, if you make professional rails, the feet are under the concrete, you know, like at the skate park or something like that. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you're making one, my recommendation would be to make the, the feet as wide, um, you know, both sides together, as wide as it is tall. And that way you can land at a pretty sharp angle and still have support. Like you can land pretty, you know, at an angle and you would hit it. If you land at more of an angle than that, you would start to slide it. So I feel like that would be really like a real triangle, like an equilateral triangle would be very stable. That might be wider than you need, but I think that would be a good starting point. I think the best you can do is just uh, experiment. That feels safe. If you do have the option to, to bury them somehow or bolt it to the ground, have like really, like a really narrow feet, but then bolt them to the ground, that would be a better option. But yeah, I don't know what you're working with. I feel like um, that would be safe, but yeah, let me know if, if you die. It's not my fault. Um, Will G asks, do you think the public outdoor skate parks are putting the private indoor skate parks out of business? I live in Georgia. In the last 10 years, there has been 15 to 20 public skate parks open. While this is awesome, I've noticed all the indoor parks have disappeared. Now there's only one indoor park left in the entire state. I'm happy to see more outdoor skate parks, but Georgia summers are hot. Also, do you think there's a future for indoor parks? Okay, so I had kind of the opposite experience um, when I was growing up in, in Michigan. Yes, we had really hot summers because of the, the humidity. It got, it got brutal. Like you couldn't sweat because it would just drip down. It would never, anyway, summer sucks there, but winter sucks even more. And you couldn't skate at all in the public parks because they were all covered in snow. Also, public parks in Michigan don't last very long because the constant freezing and reheating every year, all the cracks start to grow and like the ground breaks up all over the place. Um, they're, they're rough there. So the indoor, indoor parks are still popular. Um, I haven't lived there in a while, but the indoor parks are popular there because the ground is always smooth, which is a real problem. Um, you don't have to worry about the weather. And the biggest advantage that indoor parks have in my uh, experience is that they can change them. So you have a concrete park. They just built some in my, my town here and they're really cool, but there's some things I don't like about the, the layout that it's just really easy to get in each other's way and stuff like that. And too bad, you know, it's concrete. It's there now. You can't just demolish it and rebuild it if something is not perfect. It is what it is, and it's gonna stay that way for decades, most likely. At an indoor park, you can be more experimental. You can make a new box and put it over there. If people don't like it, well, maybe it was too tall or too short, or maybe we should do a down ledge over here instead, and they can move stuff around. And that was always more interesting. Where you go to an indoor skate park and you don't really know what's gonna be there. They might do something new. That, that was always a fun thing for me. That said, there is an indoor park in my town as well, and I've never been there. There was an indoor park in the town I lived in before I moved here, uh, which is you know 20 miles that way. 
and I never went there either. So I think for me, like they probably they probably require a helmet uh, is a pretty common thing. I'm not sure if the ones around me do. There's one that's like in a church and I don't know, that kind of made me uncomfortable. I don't want to like confirm my belief in Jesus before I'm allowed to go drop a kickflip or something like that. And, and I don't want to go there and pay an entrance fee and then there's a trillion kids there and you can't even do anything anyway. You know, like there's some real downsides to indoor parks for me that um, makes me not prefer them. So right now it's a boom for outdoor stuff because skateboarding is really popular, it's doing really well, and towns are gonna spend money on things that people are gonna use. In another 10 years, who knows? Maybe uh, they're gonna tear down all those skate parks and put in more basketball stuff because that becomes more popular and then indoor parks are gonna be a big deal again. I don't know. Um, I, do like, I do like them both. But I think outdoor ones are have a lot more benefits that people are into. So, yeah, um, indoor skate parks, I think, need to do more than just be a skate park. I think they have to have um, like lessons there. They have to have like a, a skate shop in there. They have to have events. They have to do other stuff to stay relevant because you can skate anywhere, especially if there's outdoor parks. But if there's not, you could skate street anyway. So, um, yeah, that's my thoughts on indoor parks. I hope they don't die out, but if they do, it's not going to affect me that much. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, go to radratvideo.com and submit them there, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.